Good evening, folks. Welcome to Insight here on Consolidated Channel Team. As always, I'm your host, Brock White. Joined by the Dickens of Preston's Managing Editor, Dustin Monkey. Dustin, how are you tonight? Not too bad. How are you? Very good. In studio this week, our guest, Sarah Jennings, newly elected city commissioner right here in Dickinson, with a great interview to talk about her vision for Dickinson going forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great stuff. Starting things off, look at the week in review, the biggest stories the past few days around the area, past week. Uh, some unfortunate news, very sad news. Uh, after uh, uh, some safe months in the oil patch, yeah, yeah you know, not, not much coming out of there. Two oil field reported deaths in the past week alone, past four days. Right. Here and in just, West North Dakota, first the big uh, the blowout mm -hmm. the fire it was it an oxy rig? Uh, no, no, no. No, uh, it was XTO. Uh, XTO, sorry. Yeah, XTO. sorry. XTO. And then a uh, crane fell. On, on someone, yeah. Yeah, and that's just I mean, it seems like when it does when it rains in the oil field. Rains, rains and pours. pours. Yeah. Um, been a long time. Been a since long had an time like since that. we've had incidents in, yeah. in the oil field, and that shows you. I mean, I don't think it says anything about it ramping up or anything like that. I just think it was two unfortunate incidents Freak that accidents. just happened to happen, yeah. and. You know, it's tough prayers with the families and everything like that. Certainly. But it's just, you know, it's it's tough. It shows just how dangerous that work can be for all our friends and neighbors that work out there in the it's oil field. One of the most day, uh, high stakes know. line of work there is Absolutely. out there for sure. So. It really is. And it just kind of brings us back to that reality that even and though we'll things are uh, slow, you know, it's still, still going out there. You it's, bet. It still, hap it still happens. And we'll see some reports coming from OSHA, I'm sure, in the next few months, right. too. We'll get the, the full story. and. Hopefully, uh, you know, it's P's and Q's are crossed. We'll find out the uh, the rest down the road. Correct. For yep. sure. Uh, Mott Regent had a nail biter. <laughs> they had the uh, the bond issue. It passed by two percentage points. Two percentage points. To remodel the school, put some money back into it, $8.3 million? Uh, 8.7. 8 $8.7 million to get the school up and going and renovate it and bring some new uh, some new life to it there. Uh, you figured that was by what? By eight, eight, eight votes inside of the election? I figured it with the amount of people that voted, eight Seven or eight voters made the difference. And what did we that. say on this show two weeks ago? Your vote counts. Your vote counts. So if you, there had been eight or, let me say, ten more people who would have said, I'm going to go in and vote against that thing. It wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. So that shows you right there. It's a perfect example how important of how important is. it is because you need a six, they need a 60% uh, pass, you know, 60% uh, of the people. The and they got 61% barely. And, like, I started doing my calculations. It looked like, I think it was either seven or eight. You know, You're roughly. familiar with the area. What were the people that were opposed to? What was, oh, what was, was their issue with the, with the bond? The people referendum? that are opposed to it were saying that, you know, why should we put $8.7 million into a school that's not growing? Uh, you know, Mott Region's pretty stagnant with mm -hmm. students. Um, some say, some calculations show that they're going to have a huge drop off soon. The proponents of it were saying that may be true, but we'll see, and maybe it maybe will grow one day. But they're saying that the school may not even survive that long. Oh wow! You know because of issues with handicap access accessibility, wiring, and technology just were behind. Um, so both sides had really good arguments, um, and other people, you know, people like uh, on the edges of the Mott region's got a pretty the fringe, big pretty yeah. big boundary one of the biggest one of the bigger school districts in our area now because you combine Mott and Regents you know 15 years ago and I mean there's people that are in the Mott region school district that are 35 miles away from Mott where the sure. school is and that's pretty far you're from Bowman you understand the yeah. the, the giant school districts that Rain, that exist. Bowman, Amadon, and yeah, Bowman is basically Armand. all of, most of Bowman County. And yeah, a little bit of slope. A little bit of slope, but yep. most of so about half a slope in New England's the other half, and Belfield's mm -hmm. a little bit too. But that's a huge area. Uh, Mott's the same way. So you have people who did not want to put their tax dollars into something that a they don't have kids going to. Sure. Either their kids go to Dickinson or New England or even Headinger, Richardson. Um, you know, people like that that didn't want to put their tax dollars into a school that they're not sending kids to or will never send kids to. And another thing is, Mott and Regent, you got some of the bigger farmers in our area there. They're facing a pretty decent sized tax increase on yeah. this. I mean, you're looking at, they say 93 cents an acre increase. I mean, that's a, that's a nice little check to write it's every a huge year. Check. Uh, you know, you're going to see, a you know, if you own a lot of land, you're going to see some taxes go up in that district. So, um, you know, that's what a lot of people were saying is that the farmers were against it. You know, some farmers were for it. Um, I've talked to a couple that were against it. Because they probably a young family or not. Or yeah, older families, is. you know, yeah. that's the thing is. And like I said, I think it all boiled down to do we absolutely have to do this or do you just wait and see what happens over the next five years? And I've heard rumblings, of, you know, and my, my, my inside sources, you know, 
were telling me that, you know, gosh, you know, do we want to do this or do we want to seek something else down the line, possible combination of school district or a, a county school with New England or a, or a bi-county school with Grant County and Elgin sure. and Leipzig. I mean, those were all things that, that, were, that were being talked about instead of this. Uh, they were talking about building a new school a couple of years ago. That fell through. Uh, did not get the votes. Would that be a big undertaking for a town like area like Mont Region? So right, a new school right. And I think that's insane. why they kind of they kind of settled Maybe on triple this. the price. Almost. Yeah, they settled on it. Would have been double the price, minimum, okay. minimum, minimum, minimum. Yeah, that bare bones. That yeah, it was bare bones. Yeah. Didn't include a gym, nothing. So, and I don't, I don't see how Mott Region could have built a sixteen million dollar school, and Dickinson Dickinson gets to build a sixty seven million dollar middle school. Uh, granted, there's twice as many or three times as many kids, but yeah, you know, doesn't work it, out. Yeah, it doesn't work. For sure. Yeah, the math doesn't work to, for me. But uh, you know, so we'll see it's what happens. By, there, but it sounds man. like you know, and we've both been in Mott School over the years and for for different activities and stuff. And it's it is getting deteriorated. Remember, it's, you had to walk through that tunnel under. I always hit tunnel. my head on the tunnel. Yeah, <laughs> going from the gym to the cafeteria during right. speech meets. Right, I hit my head in the tunnel all the time. It was so low. And so there's yeah. things that absolutely need to be fixed Definitely, there. Yeah. So they're going to get a new elementary school. They're going to do updates to their high school. It'll be a it'll be good. Yeah, good stuff from our region for those that were in favor of the bond issue. Absolutely. Uh, in the entertainment side of things, Cat Perkins, local uh, uh, native. celebrity, native from Scranton, the voice alumni, celebrity. Uh, uh, tragic news this past week, two weeks ago, yeah. kind of lost in the Orlando sh massacre. Um, the day before day that. before her voice, fellow voice contestant, Christina Grimmie, was gunned down by a lunatic fan after yeah. a concert. Signing um, autographs. Signing autographs. Kat released a very beautiful tribute to her. And uh, Kat will be back in the area this week in Medora for her uh, some concerts mm -hmm. and her first ever music camp she's doing. Right. Yeah, I talked to her yesterday for about oh, 15 minutes and we had a great conversation about the song, how it's Genesis. And it was actually written by her boyfriend, who is her guitarist and Eric, her producer. Yeah. And, you know, she, he was, it was written for someone else. But everything about it lined up with Christina's death and the Orlando shootings and everything like that, too. So she made this video and it's kind of a bare bones video but it's very poignant it's yeah. very you know what it's supposed to be um somber and sincere. somber yes somber and sincere it's a great way to put it and it's piano piano tune basically it's an acoustic it's well, i would call it acoustic but acoustic piano yeah. if that's what the term is um tribute to christina grimmie and it was really it's a really beautiful little song and uh, it's called angels uh, it'll be released on itunes either you know i think it was going to supposed to be released wednesday but it might not be released till thursday or friday uh, she has her concert on Saturday in Medora at the Burning Hills Amphitheater at 3.30. It'll be the first time she performs that song live, it sounds like. And she will, I mean, that'll be, that'll bring the house down. Yeah, it's, you bet. It's, it'll, it'll make people cry. It, it just Definitely. will, especially when she starts talking about her story. Talking about the harsh I mean, these, these, bit, yeah. She was roommates with this gal in, 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 when they were at The Voice, when they do all their And it's stuff. funny because Christina, Christina at the time was probably at the time 18, 18? 17 and so, so like she was like cats the veteran cats like the veteran yeah. like showing her the ropes of the industry and everything yeah. like that because she's kind of she'd kind of been through the ringer and done different things and now cats kind of on the national stage more than anything yeah. and does different aspects of it and she's you know she's really trying to you know her whole thing her hashtag is choose love on yeah. this and instead of hate and i think she's trying to get that out there Spread the positivity for right. sure, and it's just it's a good song. And we, I, I don't know if there's still tickets available to her concert or not. But Did I you suppose if you want to, over there, yeah. yeah, if you want to, I mean, definitely check on that with Medora. But uh, three thirty on Saturday concert, and she's going to have her music camp kids uh, be her opening act. There's 28 kids from the upper Very Midwest, exciting. North Dakota, Minnesota, uh, some from California even that are coming to this camp that are there. Sit, sit under the learning tree of Cap yeah, Perkins, yeah, and, and a couple other people there. It sounds like too. But she, they're doing this Badlands Rising Star Music Camp. And yeah, turn off your phone. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, but they're going to be the opening act, and then they're going to perform a set with her. They're going to do a tribute to Shyla Schaefer uh, as all this, because Shyla was very close to Cat when Cat was on the uh, part of the Burning Hill Singers. Sure. Uh, she said she was pretty affected by her her passing earlier this year, and she wanted to do some sort of a tribute to her. The First Lady of Medora. Right. Yeah, definitely. And they're all going to be wearing yellow. Uh, oh, she, perfect. Yeah. Shyla's favorite color. Yep. So it's uh, kind of a cool deal that they're going to be. Going to be uh, taking under here, and it's uh, should be a nice, be nice weekend in Medora for sure. Absolutely. We'll take a quick commercial break, come back with our interview with Sarah Jennings right here on Insight. Consolidated is committed to providing advanced network systems and service to the business world. Staying ahead of the curve by offering digital technology with voice over IP, Ethernet circuits, hosted telephone systems, as well as cloud-based networking. GNET Fiber Technology allows us to offer internet speeds up to one gig, making your network more efficient. Our sales and technical team take pride in providing state-of-the-art service to our customers. 
At Consolidated, we're here to listen and offer the most efficient solutions for your business. All right, folks, welcome back to Insight. In studio this week, our guest, newly elected city commissioner, Sarah Jennings. Sarah, how are you? I'm well. Thank you guys Thanks so Thanks for much joining us yeah. today. I know. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> 26 years old, correct? Correct. Almost 27. It's almost yeah. 27. <laughs> uh, a bit of an unknown in the political world in Dickinson, which is not a bad thing or a good thing. It just is what it is. Yes. So for those at home that don't know who you are, tell us really quick a quick bio of you and why you want to be a city commissioner in Dickinson, why you are now. Okay, well, I am I like to say I'm from Dickinson. I moved here when I was um, a freshman in high school. I went to DHS. I'm a graduate of DSU with a political science major. I'm currently in a master's program uh, for public administration through the University of Mary, nice. so I'm staying busy. <laughs> um, but I claim Dickinson as home because I've been here every Christmas and summer yeah. since I was a young child. My, my mother's uh, graduated from DHS. My grandparents lived here, so it's always been where I came, True. where my happy memories are. Yeah. So. It's been home forever. I um, have a six-year-old daughter named Aubrey, and she rocks. She's my <laughs> biggest fan, and I love her. She and wanted to come on the show she today. Did. We should have brought her on. She was we, very upset. I heard you kept her busy on the campaign trail with you. She yep. was. That's yes. awesome, yeah. <laughs> she was basically my campaign manager. She <laughs> walked up to people and said, vote, my, vote for my mom. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, but yeah, she helped me hand out magnets, and I dragged her to meetings. Mm -hmm. and. Um, she's been super, so it's been, it's been a good summer. And she actually was with me when I won, and I started screaming, and <laughs> she's like, Mom, what is it? And I was like, I won, we did it! <laughs> she was super happy, Great. so. Very cool. It was cool to, she was proud of me, and I could tell, so that was one of, a defining moment, that's yeah, for it's sure. A, it's a good mom moment, yeah. <laughs> for sure, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Tell us, you know, what, you know, now that you're on the city commission, you've been elected to the city commission, and what were some of your hopes, what were you running on you know, what were some of the things that uh, you wanted to get accomplished as a city commissioner, that you want to get accomplished as a well, city commissioner? The biggest thing is uh, there's a huge lack in youth involvement and in what's mm -hmm. going on locally, and I really want to see that change. I want to mm -hmm. see us mobilize young leaders. I want people to realize you don't have to be in business for 30 years. You don't have to have a large check in your bank account. You can still run and be a part and be an activate, mm -hmm. or excuse me, activate <laughs> advocate locally. Yeah. So um, that was really one of the biggest things I ran on. And through my past work with uh, United States Senator Heitkamp, I really got to get involved locally with what was going on. And I heard the concerns, and I heard people, and what they had to say. And when I saw that there was an open seat, I thought, what the heck? I'm going to yeah. give it a try. <laughs> sure. I mean, it, I don't think I was shocked by it. I mean, we, you know, and the other thing, too, is the, the woman side of it. We hadn't had a woman on the city commission for, what, now four years? Shirley Ducart. Shirley yeah. Ducart. Um, and it just seems like, you know, we're kind of due for that as well. I think, did you see a lot of, uh, did, you, did you feel a lot of love from women voters out there when you were out there on the campaign trail? Definitely. Actually, I was really surprised at the outpouring of support that I did get, not only mm -hmm. from women, but from men mm -hmm. and from young people. Yep. You know, people want to see that. They want to see Fresh voice is never a bad thing. Exactly. Yeah. And I know we've had so many young people run for the city commission over the years here, and it just seems like they always ran and when there was like seven other people yeah. running. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that seems like, you know, where they kind of fell off there lost at that in the point. Shuffle so almost, lost damn. in the shuffle, yeah, when you have two open spots and three people right. running, you know. It was a, it was definitely a, the time to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I ran on quality of life. And, right. how, you know, for so many years, Dickinson struggled to keep young people here. And now mm -hmm. that we don't have these large income jobs available that we once did, we need to start focusing on that again. And we need to create a community that people want to live in. Mm -hmm. Dickinson's wonderful, but there's always room to improve. Right. And having a young person who has a family and that's really my focus, I think is going to be really beneficial for the commission. Absolutely. Do you have uh, specific ideas on quality of life in Dickinson, things you'd like to see uh, in town improve or come to town to, to help with that? Absolutely, and I think you guys have kind of touched on it in previous Insight uh, videos, but you know, the convention center I think is just such a neat idea. Mm -hmm. I know that's that it would be a large um, Undertaking, yeah. A yeah. very large undertaking, but the what it can bring to Dickinson, mm -hmm. I think, would be outstanding. Also, you know, for quality of life, the Crooked Crane Trail is coming. I think that's mm -hmm. such a great idea. I love to ride my bike. Mm -hmm. I want to see more bike lanes. You know, I want to feel comfortable riding in mm -hmm. the city. People want to be outside. What can we do for them? You know, we live in North Dakota. Well, and I think you're right. On the Crooked Crane Trail, we got to make sure that that stays open in the sun in the winter. Absolutely. That you say that. You know, we have that. It's going to be a great summer area, but 
that also has to be open in the spring, fall, winter too. The, those other yeah. ten months well, of the people year. People use it. <laughs> and there, we have a ten. lot of marathoners in Dickinson yeah. that run very hard, right. and to give them something beautiful like that to run, mm -hmm. you know, I think it'll inspire others to get out there. It too. seems like there's a five k every weekend in town. Oh, yeah. One or two. It's I haven't so done one yet. I'm you know, really I'm, too. I'm not, we I'm should not, all do I'm, one. I'm, <laughs> I'm not in the running culture. If no, you can't yeah. notice. That's <laughs> night I don't do much running, but it seems I've, like I've done five k's. Like a lot of I've done five k's. I was about twenty pounds lighter when I did my five k's. Turkey trot, I guess. <laughs> that's about it. Did you wear the turkey costume? I did, yeah, yeah. You did? Wear yeah. No, no. <laughs> Anyways, back to back to more pressing matters. Um, so, uh, young woman, young family in Dickinson. Uh, you know, uh, keeping them here is so big. I mean, you think all the jobs not being um, mm -hmm. high paying at the moment. So, do you think things recreationally in town are where they need to be right now? I think there's always room to improve. Um, you know, I love the community center. I'm a member. My daughter and I go there all the time, but it's it's spendy. Mm -hmm. You know, it mm -hmm. is. And if you have a large family, so what can we give to our community that's free? You know, so more parks. I, parks, but I've been told you know that's not really my jurisdiction as a commissioner. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but you know, anything that we can work, we should be all but be working together. But you can work together. with the park board. Yeah. You can work with the park exactly. board. Exactly. And the more that we can communicate and be open mm -hmm. with the other committees and boards the better Dickinson's going to do. So we need to open that communication. It's great. You, you and I were talking before the election, you know, and I said, you know, we brought up, you know, you working for High Camp since you were what? You started when you were what, 24 or 23? I was 23. 23. Yep. So someone would say, you know, people would say, man, this, this girl wants to be in politics her whole life or something like that. And you've said that's not really the case. You like the small city government. Mm -hmm. You know, you worked, for the, you worked for the big dogs for a little bit. And now you bet you want to see what you can do in city government. And you also said that you, this is not a career long-term goal Absolutely. for you. You know, explain that a little bit. Well, so my degree is in political science. Mm -hmm. And that's because I, I'm really impassionate about public service. And I, I really like watching mm -hmm. how it works. And I mean, it is what keeps everything moving. Mm -hmm. So when I started working for Senator Heitkamp, it was an internship. Right. And it was, you know, it was an opportunity for me to get involved. And I've always been fascinated with Washington and <laughs> just kind of how it does or doesn't work. <laughs> um, so yeah. I actually, you know, I got to go there and, and I saw the very ugly side of it as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to you're never going to make anyone happy. And that mm -hmm. really shied me away from, right. from a lot of things. But when I saw the opportunity for the Dickinson City Commission, I saw a room to change. I, you know, these are local leaders. They're not mm -hmm. politicians. We're here to, because we love where we live. Yeah. And we want to do everything we can to make this place better. So my goal here is to just get involved, to inspire, mm -hmm. maybe inspire some people along yeah. the way and make room for other leaders. And still hold a job and yeah, go absolutely. to school. Well, in your case now, right now too, go to going to school, you know, while you do all that too. Yeah, I mean, definitely. so that's, that's also, you know, great to see. Um, you know, overall, four years on the city commission, you know, what do you want to see done in this city by 2020? We asked Decker this question too, and as a, as the, at the Dickinson Press, when we had our editorial boards with the three mayor candidates, we asked them that question too. So Clayton gave us his answer, Rod gave us his answer. Clayton will still be on the city commission, yes. obviously. Uh, you know, what do you want to see done in this town, you know, in the next four years? What do you want to see for Dickinson? Well, I think we really have a great blueprint. You mm -hmm. know, I think we've expanded Dickinson. Now we have a, a a lot of gaps mm -hmm. and I know that's constantly being reiterated but we need to fill those gaps and we need to look at how who who and what Dickinson needs to be mm -hmm. in by 2020 so I think that's going to take a lot of community involvement and the community input and I think that sometimes the Commission lacks that because many times they hear the story after it's already over right and we've discussed that before and I want to try to open that process up mm -hmm. so you know, I can honestly say I don't have any um, a personal agenda. I'm just hoping to bring people together and get this common vision going. Mm -hmm. So what I want to see for 2020 is a better Dickinson, more infill, more restaurants, more quality of life. You know, let's, let's get downtown going. Mm -hmm. The Esquire has this beautiful rooftop right now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why don't we have something up there? Yeah. <laughs> it looks awesome. People would love that. Money and time. Bernie, oh, are you listening? Yeah. Yeah. Bernie. I'm, <laughs> he's, I'm sure he's heard it many times. But, yeah. you know, I mean, there's just so many neat things that, Dick that can be mm -hmm. done in Dickinson. Right. So, you know, by being a part of the commission, I hope to, like, light that fire and help Hopefully well, I think you have some like-minded people on the commission there too that totally. uh, see that same vision. I know at least the two mayoral candidates that are on the commission that were on the commission feel the agreed same with way. you. They feel with yeah, exactly. So, um, and from what I know, everyone else does as well. Yeah. How do you feel about the city's uh, ability to service the debt load? That's one of the big things. Yeah. I was in the paper this past week. It's a big 
dark cloud over the city at the moment. Mm -hmm. Very, very dark cloud. So they say 60 million is that oil has impact. To, yeah. Yeah, which is, cr it's crazy. That's a crazy number. And I think we really have to make sure that when the legislature is in session again, that we are getting our voice right. out and that they don't overlook us this time. Yes, mm -hmm. we're not producing the oil that we once were, but neither is anybody else. Exactly. <laughs> but that, that is still <laughs> here. Yep. And we are still impacted and we're still dealing with that. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that they're not overlooking us next time and that we're getting those people there that are going to make them listen. Right. And I mean, debt low cities traditionally will carry a heavy amount of debt. Yes. And I mean, that's something we just kind of overlooked here in yeah. Western North Dakota right. for the several years that we've had. You know, really, well, we had a lot to, of money we coming. We had in. to build the infrastructure. We had to, we had to. Yeah. yes. And that uh, 60 million, like, like you said, it is oil impact. The other 33 is, you know, community center. Community center. Right. It's different things that's like that. But that, but that stuff gets paid off over time. It and does. I think that the city does have a, a decent plan to get this paid off without, they you do. know, defaulting. Well, obviously. and you know, it's really hard to answer budget questions because right. I don't have that information mm, that right. a lot of the commissioners do. And the biggest part of this job is going to be the research mm -hmm. and the community outreach and making sure that. When, before you sit down for that meeting, that you have your P's and Q's aligned. So, well, to, to engage your constituents too is, is really big, and that'd mm -hmm. be nice to have some uh, some more involvement with the people in town and get their voices on it, to the meetings. Well, and I was really happy to see how many people actually viewed the city commission debate. I don't know how many <laughs> watched it. Did they watch it just for the chicken question? Just for the chicken or question. The chicken yeah. question. <laughs> you would not believe how many people have brought that up to me. What, what, what do they it? say? What do they ask you yeah. on that? Well, okay, so well, we yeah. had 22 questions. We didn't know what any of them were, so we had no preparation. And I can can I can I interject? Yes. This question was actually submitted to us. Legitimately. Yeah. Legitimately. Yeah. So was it Harvey was, feeling wild. Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't Harvey <laughs> just asking a question. This was it was a question actually submitted to the Dickinson Press to For ask the, the commissioners. So the question was, and I was the first to answer, so I'm so <laughs> nervous, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And uh, Harvey Brock goes, well, we have a constituent who lived elsewhere and were allowed to have chickens in their backyard on their property. How do you feel about this since Dickinson doesn't allow yeah. it? Or that was along yeah. the lines. And first of all, I was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, okay, this is a good first question. Is this real life? Yeah. And it was funny because my boyfriend and I were actually at a farm that day. And I was like, I want chickens. <laughs> like, this is awesome. Like, you just come get your eggs yeah. in the morning and crack them open. But uh, my answer was, you know, I'm a believer in small government. Mm -hmm. I don't want too much intervi intervention in mm -hmm. what I have going on on my personal property. Right. If my neighbors, if I'm considerate of my neighbors and they're okay mm -hmm. with it, then what we the can heck? We can handle it on the block. Yeah, I, d yeah. I don't like too much interjection <laughs> into Have an omelet party. Omelet party, yeah. yeah. We'll have an omelet party. But yeah, that was the question of Chickens, the night. Chickens, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. Well, Sarah, thanks for coming on the show Thank today. You. And the best Absolutely. luck to you in your, in your first tenure in the City Commission. Thank you so much. We look forward to maybe having you back on the show down the road as well. I would love to. Absolutely. Thanks All right, so well, thanks for coming on. We'll yes. be back after this. Look at the week ahead right here on Insight. A bundle from Consolidated is your local choice for internet, TV, and phone at a better value. Our internet is now faster than ever with GNET technology. Get affordable, consistent speeds now up to one gig. Our state-of-the-art TV connections deliver more HD choices and convenient DVR options, including TiVo. Our local phone service keeps you in touch for less, all backed by exceptional 24-hour support. Make the local choice for a better value by bundling. Call or visit Consolidated online today. All right, folks, welcome back to Insight. It's time for a look at the week ahead here. The big stories coming up this weekend around the area. Uh, it's Rough Rider Day as Dustin the Rodeo's in town, yep. and they have the uh, Rancher, uh, of the Rancher of the Year, Gene Harris. Gene Harris, featured, uh, the paper. Well, featured on Friday's paper. Uh, cool. Gene Harris, uh, we've got a big, kind of a busy weekend in the paper. You know, Marvin Nelson, Democratic governor candidate, will be in town on Thursday. Yeah. There he is in town here he'll Thursday. Be at Dunn Brothers. He, well, he'll be, he well, was at Dunn Brothers was. this evening. Okay, sorry, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was, so we'll have a story on that on him in Friday's paper. He's being met with our editorial board. Uh, we'll, I'll be covering on Friday in uh, National Association of Royalty Owners, North Dakota chapters in town. They have a few oil executives, oil people that will be speaking to them. Um, just going to we'll cover that and see. Yeah, I just want to see what it's all about. Uh, we have a preview of the grand opening of the Richard and Health Center. Yeah. Uh, and then on Sunday we have a great feature on uh, the Wallace family. Um, if anybody... If you ever, you know, interacted yeah. with a police officer in Dickinson at one you time know or another, Wallace. you may have interacted with a Wallace. Dave Wallace, everybody knows Dave Wallace the Crime Stopper is what we always used to call him. Yeah, and, and, his uh, commercials scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> I'd be watching SNL late at night on a Saturday, yep. and he'd be like one of the last segments. Right. And it was the, the sound of the music, and he was so serious, I was like, 
Did I know someone that committed a crime? I need to call crime <laughs> stoppers. It was always so serious. <laughs> the Wallace family is a great, 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 great family, legacy great in law enforcement in the area. Yeah, and they, they're all involved. He's yes. either law enforcement or first responders, Dave and his family. So it's a great story by Kelsey. Um, Look forward to reading that one. Absolutely. I know the Wallace is very well and just uh, great people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No monkey business this week. We've got a couple other stories we can touch We're on. We're a little here. salty today we, in the studio. Everybody in this time about some things. Ron Rhodes, our producer, he's salty. Everybody's salty. We're a little fired up. Maybe it's best we avoid any kind of commentary today. Yeah. We'll, we'll have some commentary. We'll couple, have some commentary. couple of breaking stories, though. Um, the fracking uh, ban that the, the uh, BLM and the in Congress wanted to pass, right. a judge in, uh, in uh, Wyoming. Wyoming overturned it. Yes. Um, North Dakota was a party to the lawsuit. Yep. They saying that Several hey, other states. you know, we have our own policies in our state, our own regulations. We're just fine. Yes. We don't need the BLM and government overreach. Leave well, us alone. And Paul Ryan comes out and says, right. "Great." Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you remember, a few months back, they had a meeting here, a big meeting here in Dickinson, where like. Every single oil field guy, yeah. oil, uh, you know, main power person, player, power, well, power player, main person for offices here in Dickinson came and they gave testimony against this. Um, you know, the only people that were giving testimony for it were like environmental groups and things like that. Basically, the, this is a win for the oil industry. It is, yeah. uh, and a win for North Dakota's oil What's industry. It's a win for common sense. The, the right. power should be at the state level, not the federal level. Right. The uh, federal government should have no control over what we do here in There's North Dakota. There's our salty part today. <laughs> federal government should have no control over how North Dakota drills South oil. South Dakota, Wyoming, Period. Montana, anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. It starts at the state so, level. Just because it has that dirty word called fracking that we've been doing yeah. for 70 years, and nobody, everybody kind of forgot about it until about fine. five years ago. But yeah, and th you know, th so that's a good idea going on. Another thing you know happened in town this week was that Dickinson Rough Riders. It was uh, shocking Legion, for some people. Legion baseball coach Corey Hansen uh, resigned. Almost 10 years on and off as the coach. Of the yeah, team. he took a few years off there. Um, he was a coach during some state championship years. He, the, one of I think one of the greatest achievements he had as a coach was in 2012 when we hosted the Central Plains Regional. Dickinson had a mid-level team, so to speak. They mm -hmm. were really young that year. Uh, Dylan Scable was uh, was one of the best players on that team, but he was still really young. We had some they had some decent pitching actually, but they hosted the Central Plains Regional, which is the state champions from every state in the Upper Midwest. It was quite the event here, Nick. It, it, it always from is all over the area. Yeah. And there's and there's stuff. You know, there's uh, we'll get it back too. It sounds yeah. like in a couple of years they're hoping to get it back. But yeah, the alumni games. And well, stuff no, that's and not. That's different. That's separate. That, that's separate. This is this was the best best Legion baseball teams in the Upper Midwest competing for a trip to the World Series. Oh, okay. And Dickinson got within two wins of the World Series, that, yep. despite finishing like fifth in the state, fifth or sixth in the state, because they just they hit a hot streak. Corey went with the right went with the right players and the right pitching at the right time, and he beat some of the best teams and the the Rough Riders. They beat some of the best teams in the Upper Midwest, including some like stack teams out of Nebraska and South Dakota. Home cooking, right? It was home yeah. cooking that week, and it was great. It was right. It was a. I loved. It. I'll never forget it because it was right during the Olympics when Ramon Miller won the gold medal. So oh. he had this great. Two two stories in sports happening in our area at the same time. Obviously, they didn't win the world. Didn't win the state or the Central Plains Regional. Didn't go on to the World Series, but they finished third. They played on the final day, which is like unheard of. When we hosted it a, a year, or, yeah, the previous year, two years earlier than that, something like that, when we had that really really good team with Frenzel and those guys, they didn't even win it, and they went to the Central Plains Regional as well at, in Minnesota and different places. Sure. Frenzel, Haroff, Laylock, that whole trio. He coached those guys along with Andy Emmerd. Um, you know, so yeah, diff we've, with Corey Hansen stepping down, it is a change in Dickinson Baseball's summer program, their Legion program, because he set the tone for that program for the past decade or so, past 10 years, um, whether as manager of the Dickinson Baseball Club or as the Legion team's coach. Um, just a little difference of opinion with kids, it sounds like. You know, and Legion baseball is a tricky one. You know, either you're going to be playing hardcore baseball mm -hmm. and you're out to, you know, improve yourself and work toward a college scholarship or, or something, something to do like in the that. Summertime. Or it's just something to do. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, more of the kids felt like this is more they want to have something to do, have a little more fun. Uh, Dickinson plays a lot of games in the summer. They play a lot of big time teams from other states. They go to major tournaments. Um, and that was the whole goal when they brought Corey on was to build up this Dickinson baseball program. And I think Kelly Armstrong said it in the paper, you know, that, you know, he's been more successful than any coach in, in Legion history, you know, in Dickinson. So, sure. And Dickinson history, Dickinson's got a great history of Legion baseball. That's a big change so for sure. It is Definitely. a big change. Big change. And uh, we'll see what happens over the next couple of years here. But I think, you know, for me, he'll be sorely missed. I mean, Corey is kind of a salty guy himself you know and i'll never forget that with him That's but the word uh, today. we're all salty. Is, yeah I don't know what it is Something but you know air. what he, the, the guy guy knew baseball and he got the job done 
So it'll, I, you know, I think I think the club's going to miss him in the in the end. There you go. So. Hats off to Coach Hanson for sure. Yep. There you go. Thanks to our guest this week, Sarah Jennings, the New Lincoln City Commissioner, coming in studio to talk about her vision, her goals for Dickinson. Yep. Absolutely. And a little bit about her. We'll see you guys next week right here on Insight.